Hi, this is Cam from CraftyCAD.com and welcome to the very first video tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be running you through the basics of how to draft up a timber workbench in DoubleCAD and get it ready for printing. So I've just run DoubleCAD and with, we open with this splash screen so I'm just going to hit new which will take us to a template screen. Now all of these templates come loaded in to DoubleCAD. Each of them has different settings, so the A0 denotes a sheet size, white and black will set your model space background colour, and then you've got metric and imperial templates for the units. For this tutorial I'll be working with the normal black metric template, so I'm going to click that and then click OK. Now we're taken into a blank drawing in model space. If we look down the bottom left we'll see there's two tabs in, by default in the drawing. The one that's selected is the model tab, which means we're in model space. If I left click on the layout one tab, we get taken into paper space. Now paper space is where all of our printing is done. This white area here denotes the sheet size for our final print. So I'm going to update that by right clicking on the layout one tab, go to properties, and then under page setup, I'm going to change my plotter. So I'm using a free PDF printer. I'm going to change my sheet size to A3 make sure that's landscape and change my workspace sheet properties to A3 as well landscape hit OK now that's updated our sheet here with uh, A3 sheet so I'll quickly run through how model space and paper space work together you can think of model space and paper space like a painting with a frame or a picture with a frame so model space is like our canvas where all of our our painting or drawing or line work goes and the layout uh, paper space is like the frame. So each of the elements in our, on our canvas can get shown on the paper space frame at a different scale. So to do that we use viewport. So I'm going to create a name view for each of these shapes. And then jump over into paper space and create viewports for each of them. So create a viewport, you go view viewport and then drag a box. Go to one of those name views we just created and you can see it's it's created a frame around and showing the line work beyond. Now we can turn that frame off by double clicking on it on the viewport, clicking on the viewport and hitting visible box. In this area we, we can also change the scale. So if we've drawn a piece of timber that's a meter long, obviously a meter long piece of timber is not going to fit onto an A3 sheet so we scale it down by 10 let's say and you can see that shrunk those down and the viewport box is gone I can do that again for my other view and these are dynamically linked to my model space so if I draw another line through here you'll see that it appears on each of these viewports so they're like windows onto that canvas. Okay, so let's just quickly cover the toolbars and interface in DoubleCAD. On the left hand side we've got our draw toolbar which contains the tools we use to create our line work. So we've got the line tool, rectangle tool, circle tool, etc. On the right hand side we've got our modify toolbar which contains all the tools we'll use to modify the line work we draw. It has tools like erase, copy, move and rotate. We'll be using some of these tools in our tutorial but I recommend just having a look through all of them and seeing how they work. Now we'll move on and take a look at the coordinate system in DoubleCAD. So I'm just going to delete this line work and I'll start by drawing a circle. Now I want the center of my circle to have an x value of 0 and a y value of 0 which will locate it at our world origin. So I've clicked on the circle tool, now I type in 0 comma 0 and it drops that circle in with its center at my world origin. If you look down in the bottom right hand corner here you'll see there's three input boxes. There's an x input box, a y box and a z box. Because we're only working in 2D we'll only be dealing with the x and the y values. So the X box here shows a point along a horizontal axis and the Y box here shows a point along a vertical axis. So if I draw a line and I want my start point to be at that world origin point, so type in 0, 0, you'll see this next point, as I move my mouse horizontally, 
The further away from that point I get, the higher the number in this X box goes. So when I move to the right, it counts up. When I move to the left, it actually turns into a negative number. So the further away to the left I move my mouse, the smaller that number gets. Similarly with the Y direction, if I move my mouse above, you see the, the value in this Y box here increases the further away from that point I get. If I move my mouse below, that number turns into a negative and gets smaller and smaller the further out I get. So this is what we use to orientate our objects in space in DoubleCAD. So to quickly demonstrate this, I'm going to draw a line that's 150 to the right of my world origin and 150 millimeters above that world origin. So to do that, for the second point of this line, I type in 150, comma 150. So now this point here is 150 millimeters to the right of that point and 150 millimeters above that point. So we can set out all our objects in space using this principle. So if I want a circle that's 200 millimeters to the right of this point, I just type in 200, comma, 0. So now the distance between the center of this circle and the center of this circle is 200 millimeters. Now let's say I want to draw a line from this point and I want it to be 200 millimeters long and perfectly horizontal. If I just type in 200, comma, 0, it actually snaps that second point to this point which has an X value of 200 and a Y value of, value of 0. So to accomplish this, I pick my first point in my line and to make my next point relative to that first point I type in an at symbol and then type in 200 in the X direction and 0 in the Y direction. So you can see it's actually used this as that new 0, 0 point only for this next point. So this is, that's called using relative coordinates. Now I've done a quick mini tutorial which is available on my website or YouTube page which demonstrates this a bit more clearly. So I check that out before we carry on. Now that we've got our head around the coordinate system, I'll run you through setting up layers and the object properties. Each object has its own set of properties here. So if you look up the top, we can change the color of the line. We can change the line style to be a hidden line or a center line. We can change the line weight, which is the thickness that it will actually print out. So each of these properties can be set individually for each element, or we can control this with our layers. So we're going to set each of these things to by layer. So click on the colors drop down and click this by layers button. Again, for the line style, click by layer, and for the line weight, click by layer. That means whatever layer these are sitting on, it will inherit the properties from that. So we'll open up our layers dialog box. And you can see we've got a couple of default layers in here. We're going to create a new layer by clicking on this starburst icon. And we're going to call this layer 35 solid. So that's the layer name. This eyeball icon turns the layer on and off. This here sets the color. So we'll leave it black for now. This one here sets the line style. And because this is a solid layer, we want it to be a continuous line. The pen width we're going to set to 0.35, which is matching the name name of the layer. We'll create a new another new layer. We'll call this 1.8 hidden. So we'll leave the color the same, but this time we're going to select the hidden line. So it's the dashed line in that drop down, and we're going to set this line weight to 0.18 millimeters thick. So we'll close this, and then for each of these objects, we can now change the layer that these are sitting on. Currently they're sitting on layer 0. So if I go up to this drop down box after selecting them and then select 35 solid, you see the line weight's actually increased. Now I'll put these lines onto 18 hidden layer and you'll see they've actually turned into a dashed line. So that's how we create layers and control the object properties.
just before we move on to drafting our workbench, I'm going to change the length of the dashes and spaces in this hidden line type. So I'm going to go up to Format, Line Styles. We've set our layer to use the dash line, so I'm going to click on that and then click Modify. Now here you can see it sets out the parameters for each of the line types. So we can tell it we want our dash length to be 3mm long and the space between each dash to be 1mm. So I change those values, hit OK, hit OK again, and that will set our line types to print correctly in paper space.